ready to throw hands with myself last year because I had way too many favorites. This was quite the video to conquer. As you can tell by the title, I am going to go over my favorite makeup of 2021 and where are they now? And I was sure when I did this video, I'd just be like, I still love this, I still love this, I still love this. I can't be wrong, right? Just kidding, because I was wrong. Some of these, very surprising, my opinion has changed. Am I still using these? Do I still even own these? Let's talk about it. We're gonna go ahead and get started with primers. So the first primer that I have is the Fourth Ray, which is Colourpop's sister brand, Oat Face Milk. So I just loved their face milks in general. They're very lightweight, they're very moisturizing, and I think they're perfect before makeup. I haven't been using these as much. I feel like a lot of really good hydrating primers have come out over the last year. I feel like brands started to recognize the need for that in the market. So I have not been using these as much, but I still appreciate this as a really nice lightweight kind of moisturizer before makeup. So haven't been using these as much, but they still are quite good. We have the Gucci Beauty Silk Priming Serum. This is still one of the top primers on the market for me, but I think there's been quite a few that have come out that are similar to this. I'm thinking I like the Fenty Beauty more than this, potentially the Rare Beauty. Those are the three where I feel like they're identical. There's this one, the Rare Beauty and the Fenty Beauty. All of them are equally as good, so I can't really say which one I prefer more, but this is not one of a kind. And I don't think I thought it was one of a kind last year, but I was digging into my primers more in 2022 when I kind of discovered like, these kind of all do the same job. What makes this one stand out is the name. You know, I buy for the name, I buy for the packaging, I buy for the aesthetic. This is Lux Lux quality, but you can get similar formula for not a Gucci Beauty price point, but I still love it. I still think it's a great primer. And then this one last year became one of my all time favorite makeup primers. This is the Armani Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. Here to update you gladly that this is still one of my favorite all-time primers. It's hydrating and it leaves the prettiest glow to the skin. It's not glittery and it's impactful. It still shows through, especially if you have a lighter coverage product over top. So this is one of the most underrated primers in my opinion. I never hear anybody talking about it. I discovered this last year because it came in a random PR package and I absolutely fell in love and I am still loving this primer. I would say of the three primers that I'm mentioning today, this is the one where I feel just as strongly as I did last year. Moving into foundations, this first one is from Guerlain. This is a Le Sanchel High Perfection Foundation. I have it on this side of my face and I am also still loving this. I haven't reached for this as much because it is harder to get a hold of, but it is just as beautiful as it was last year. This is a top performing matte foundation in my opinion. It makes the skin look really smooth. It gives amazing coverage without looking too cakey. Cause you know when a product has a lot of coverage, it can look heavy on the skin. It's not a lightweight foundation by any means, but it certainly is a perfecting one and it doesn't look too unnatural. So I'm not saying I'm reaching for this every day. I have quite the large makeup collection, but if somebody is willing to splurge on a really good foundation, they want it a little bit more matte, smoothing, kind of perfecting looking. This is great. I would say an affordable alternative for this. Excuse you. <laughs> I would say an affordable alternative to this would be the Catrice High Coverage Liquid Foundation. The one that I put in my favorites this year, that is the dupe for this. Huh, that's a good TikTok idea. Remind me. Okay, the other foundation that I have is actually a skin tint. This is the Fenty Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint. This is by far my favorite foundation that Fenty has. I just find that the Fenty foundations don't really work for me, but this one was the first one that did. I'm comparing it to the Guerlain, which is very, very different. So this one is a, light, a lot more light coverage. It feels lighter on the skin. It's not as smoothing, it's not as perfecting. Next to the Guerlain, I definitely prefer the Guerlain, but this is a really great everyday skin tint. It provides about a medium coverage, higher than I thought it would, considering the name of it is Skin Tint. I still very, very much like this. I haven't reached for it a ton because a lot of tinted moisturizer products 
came out this past year so this kind of fell back but i would say this is probably one of my more favorite skin tints still it's one of the better ones i talked about it very recently on my fenty review video it's the best one that they have it's very very nice and then lots of fenty products last year that i really liked i don't even know that i had any in this year's favorites but this is the fenty beauty pro filter soft matte powder foundation I am such an advocate for powder foundations, though I'm a hypocrite because I haven't been wearing that many powder foundations lately. I don't know why it would make sense for me to do that in the heat. Like, I like a powder foundation in the humidity because it turns into almost like a liquid foundation. Anyways, this one is still really nice. I did set my under eyes with this the other day and it looked horrific, but if you just use like a normal sponge applicator, this gives very, very nice coverage. So I've fallen off of powder foundations and I hate to admit that because I always talk up powder foundations, but I have fallen off in the last year. So this hasn't gotten as much use. But I haven't found a lot of good powder foundations this year. I was off of them. So this still rings in as one of the best powder foundations. One of them. Not the best, but one of them. And then for concealers, I have three. The first one is the ABH Magic Touch Concealer. This, it was one of those launches where unexpectedly a brand launches a game-changing product, one that infiltrates its way into an all-time favorite status, not just of the year, but not to be dramatic, but ever. <laughs> That's how I feel about this one. This is such a versatile concealer. It has all the qualities that I like. It has a skin-like finish, provides medium to full coverage, looks really lightweight. It has a more liquidy consistency, which actually allows it to blend out easier and I think gives a more skin-like appearance. It applies really nice if you want to use it as a spot concealer. You can use it as foundation if you want for something lighter coverage and it just looks really smooth as an under eye concealer. So this one is still going down as one of my all-time favorite concealers. I've used it consistently into 2022 and the end of as well. So this is one I've put in multiple videos in the last year as well as a recommendation. So this one is still on the tippity top. Now this is one that I have changed my opinion on. Last year I put in the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Concealer as an all-time favorite. I am retracting that statement. I'm very sorry if I convince you to go out and spend buckaroos on this, but this concealer was very good the first six months that I had it. And then after six months, I feel like the formula went bad and it looks really thick all of a sudden on my under eyes. It cakes up. Even right now in today's situation, this is the ABH and this is the Tom Ford. And the Tom Ford just looks heavier and more dry. So this one legitimately has a six month shelf life, which is very interesting. Well, maybe not interesting because it does say it has a six month shelf life. So I can't fault it on that because it warns us, but this is one of the few concealers that actually listens to that. So I do not like this anymore. It's not worth the money. Now, if you buy it, you love it. You're gonna use it every day. You're gonna use it up in six months, then I do recommend it. But if not, if you're like me with a large concealer collection, this will not be worth it for you. And then the last concealer that I have is from Fenty Beauty. Again, I talked about this recently. This is the Bright Fix Eye Brightener. I stinking love this. This is a very lightweight concealer. It's not gonna give you a lot of coverage either, but it's one of the only concealers that does not crease on me. And I'm not saying that lightly, because sometimes I'll say, oh, this concealer doesn't crease. But And what I mean is it will a little bit naturally with the lines of my eyes, but this one like legit does not crease on me. It's, um, it's really inhuman, honestly. It, it fights against what is natural on my face. I don't understand, so I don't even need to set with this. It is lightweight, that's the catch. You don't get a ton of coverage, but for every day, give it to me. It is still amazing. Last year, this was in my favorites. This is the Nabla Smoothing Pressed Powder. So I messed up today. I applied it in the demo on my under eyes, but I grabbed the darker shades, so it looked horrible. 
but don't use this as an under eye setter and I think I've recommended it like that in the past. I take that back. I lied to you because it looked really dry and heavy on my under eyes. I, I eventually thought it looked so bad that I did take it off and I redid my makeup. This is still a really great smoothing powder, but don't set your under eyes with this. I don't know why it turned out so bad and heavy. But anyways, I've always talked about this powder being very underrated. I still think it is. It's very smoothing. It reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Powder, but I think Charlotte Tilbury is a bit better. That one has a little bit more oomph to it. The Nabla is the one with the oomph to it. I still like it, but after today, I, I like it less. I don't know, I feel like I've never had that happen, but maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention. So if it continues to perform like that, I don't think I like it that much anymore. The next one, this one comes with a sad story. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body. <laughs> no batter batter. I'm crying right now because this has been discontinued. Dior is kind of going through and getting rid of my favorite products to reformulate them to clean. I don't know if you like clean beauty, I'm happy for you, but they are taking away my favorite products from the brand, the Air Flash. Actually devastated, that's my number one favorite foundation. This one isn't like an all-time favorite by any means, but this is a dang good powder and I just feel like they're gonna fudge it up. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's a powder that sets your face without looking like powder. It's a baked gelée formula, so there really isn't any fallout from it as well. It's just an invisible powder is how I would describe it. If if you need powder, but you don't want the look of powder, especially those of you with like more mature skin, dry skin, that's perfect, but it's discontinued, so my B, I'm so sorry. And then the last powder that I have is from Kosas. This is the feathery, or the shade is feathery. It's the cloud set powder. I really, really like this, but honestly, I haven't used it as much this year. I really fell back into my old favorites this year. I used my Maybelline Fit Me and my Huda Beauty nonstop, and there was a couple other powders that I fell in love with this year, so this is not superior anymore, I would say. It still is a nice lightweight powder and it actually is very, very popular. A lot of people are still loving this powder, but it hasn't been an everyday reach for. But I did actually correct mistakes with this. So you know how the Nabla looked terrible? I redid my concealer and then I put this over top of my under eyes and it looks so much better. So this is still a very nice powder. Okay, let's get into bronzers. I was really into bronzers last year. I have a lot. <laughs> so the first one is from Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in light medium. Still la -la -la loving this. I think it's so amazing. I love the color of this in particular. It is the perfect like sculpting, like snatched color. The shade of this makes me look snatched. So I always wear this to special events. So this has weaseled its way into my special event, special day, the day that I want my makeup to look good, I reach for this because the color is perfect. It's not the most malleable formula, but I don't care because of how perfect the tone is. The other cream bronzer that I really loved last year was the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick. I haven't been reaching for this one as much this year. I've been picking the Makeup by Mario over this one. The colors are different, as you can see. This one is a little bit more blendable. But I have a lot of other cream bronzers that I was reaching for, so I no longer think that this is a superior formula. It's very, very pricey as well. I think it's very nice still. You still can't go wrong if you pick it up. I don't think you'd be mad at it at all but I have been reaching for other ones over this and then the last cream kind of bronzer contour situation that we have is the elf cream contour palette this is still amazing first of all it's like eight ten dollars something like that I love using this for nose contour or sometimes I'll even do my whole face with it you can mix the shades together to get the perfect tone that you're looking for but nose contour is what I've been using this so I'm still loving this and it's still one of my all-time favorite products from the drugstore I have a few powder bronzer. The first one is from Vesca Beauty. This is a soft matte bronzing powder in Kiss by Santorini. Very beautiful still. However, as you know or may not know, Vesca actually closed down this year. So they will no longer be selling this. And knowing that I just subconsciously haven't been reaching for it because I know you guys couldn't pick it up, but it still is a beautiful formulation. And then the next one that I have, oh, I love this bronzer. This is from Flower Beauty. It's a drugstore product. This is the Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. This is the perfect warm 
bronzer but still not too warm and it almost softens the way that the skin looks because it has a luminous finish but not glittery and not metallic it blends into the skin seamlessly and has a very skin like finish to it as well wherever i apply this powder it just makes my skin look soft and i don't think that's something i really ever noticed before but this is still a top notch bronzer from the drugstore definitely still one of my favorites and then the last powder bronzer that i have is the Ilia drawn in nightlight bronzing powder i also very much I'm still loving this bronzer, still using it constantly. I even have to kind of not grab for it to give some of my other bronzers some love. But this is a really good kind of tried and true bronzer that you just can't mess up. The next category is blush and very different than this year's because I don't have very many cream blushes from last year, but I do from this year. If you saw, it was a cream blush craze this year but the only cream blush that i talked about and loved last year was the tower 28 beach beach please blushes so i have two different shades that i loved magic hour and rush hour and i use these today they are so beautiful they're easy to apply they're kind of foolproof i can see why they're actually are still trending to these days but so many cream blushes came out that these kind of fell back in terms of use level not necessarily quality i did use magic hour today and it had that beautiful glowy finish just blended right into the skin so these are very popular for a reason i still think they are a phenomenal formula but there was just a lot of cream blushes that i tried in 2022 that i didn't have the time or the cheeks to put these on. <laughs> I have a lot of powder blushes though. I did really like powder blushes, I can see. But the first one that I want to mention is the Laura Mercier Passion Fruit Blush. This is still an amazing formula. I picked up a couple other shades this year and I put them in the 2022 favorites video. So that should go to show you these are still one of my all-time favorite blush formulations. And then, I can't believe it's been this long, but yeah. Last year, I put the OG Pat McGrath Labs Divine Blushes in the video. And my two favorite shades, which are still my two favorite shades, are Divine Rose. And then this one right here is one of my favorite warm blushes ever, Desert Orchid. If you don't like warm blushes on you, maybe give this one a try. I found this one to be very flattering on me, and I didn't expect it to look so good. I've actually grown to love this formulation even more. At first, when I first reviewed these, I wasn't too sure but now that I've had them for I guess a year and a half now an amazing formulation just once again a very tried and true blush formulation very easy to apply lasts all day and offers a great selection of colors Pat McGrath actually came out with duo blushes this year if you know what I'm talking about I still kind of prefer these guys right here so I'm still loving those they've almost become like a staple blush that I can always rely on now that they've been in my collection. They aren't like a new shiny object in my collection, but I still reach for them because I just know they're reliable. And then this one from Wayne Goss is the Weightless Veil Blush Palette in the shade Coral Rose. This is a beautiful formulation. I've got to be honest though, I haven't reached for this one as much. So many cheek products in 2022 to try. This is not one that I continually reach for after this past year, but it still is a beautiful formulation. I don't know, did they launch new shades? Was it this year or last year? I know he expanded the range because it is a beautiful formulation, but I, I have reached for other cheek products over these, but the highlights in these are incredible. And then I actually have two Pat McGrath highlights that I was loving. The first one was a truly limited edition one. This is the Skin Finish Sublime Skin Highlighter in Lunar Nude. And I have it on this side of my face and I honestly forgot how metallic it was. It's gorgeous. I can instantly see why I added this in my favorites because it has a strong gleam, but it almost looks translucent on the skin as well. All you see is the glow. Really luxurious formulation, and I'm sad to say I haven't reached for this a lot because I think it was limited edition, so it wasn't relevant on any of my videos, but even though I haven't used it, I used it today, and I'm like, this is like the best highlight in today's video. It's so good. I don't even think I loved it as much as I do now. I also did reach for a lot the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Divine Glow Highlighter in Nude Allure. So this was also in the 2021 favorites video. It's just not as pretty as the one I just showed you, but 
I still love this highlighter. I reach for it all the time. It really blends and meshes in with my skin really naturally as well. I just forgot how pretty and translucent that Lunar Nude was, but this is still the really 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 nice highlighter formula so I'm still using this formula a lot she launched a couple new colors this year I've been having a heyday with them I'm so upset about this so I put the NARS orgasm on the beach palette in the favorites video last year and I'm upset because NARS never launched another palette like this again they launched the holiday palette this year the star one which honestly just it wasn't that good it's not my favorite formula why have they not launched this formula again. Everybody loved this formula and I haven't been able to reach for it because NARS doesn't sell this and whenever I use it, people wanna buy it because it's so good because guys, it is still that good. It's also like a thing where because I know it's limited edition and I can't get it, I almost don't wanna use it, which is so stupid. Don't be like me. But anyways, this is a beautiful formula from NARS that they haven't created again and I, I don't know why. So I'm really sad about that. The one that they came out with this year is not good sad i want that one to come out and that was a summer launch it wasn't even a holiday launch <laughs> i'm crying over this one too when you guys see it this is definitely not this year's palette this is the patrick tom major headlines blush palette the first one the one that set the golden standard for Patrick Ta. If you've been watching my current videos, you know I really, really hate the one that launched this year. And what makes it so much worse about the one this year is how good this one was. I was expecting the one this year to be as good as the 2021's holiday palette, and it just wasn't. And I was excited for the new colors in the new palette because this one did run kind of deep. So it actually isn't one that I reach for all the time because these colors are bold on me so it you know i have to prepare myself when i use this so i was really hopeful that this year's would be the same formulation just different colors a little bit lighter for me and it wasn't so i'm really sad so this one is still phenomenal quality but over the year i didn't reach for this because the colors are just too bold and deep and bright for me if they were different colors it would be an all-time favorite of mine and yeah the one they launched this year is not shouldn't no upset <laughs> okay, and this is another one where i'm sad we didn't get another version this year this is from charlotte tilbury this is the instant look of love in a palette in the shade pretty blushed beauty she launched these every single holiday season and this was the first season we didn't get an eyeshadow palette i'm wearing a charlotte tilbury holiday eyeshadow palette from last year that's why i'm pointing at my eyes we did get a blush palette but i want an instant look palette okay this one also perfect everyday palette for me and my skin tone i gave the darker one to my mom the quality in here is really nice you get an airbrush powder i feel like this was the year that she created the best instant look in a palette and I was looking forward to see what the next one would be because this one was so beautiful and high quality and of course she didn't launch one but I use this all the time. I used it for vacation. If I ever needed a quick look, I would grab for this. This one is my most used instant look in a palette. So I still love this. This one is so great. That's it for face. I had a lot of complexion favorites. Let's move into the eyes. So the first one that I have is from e.l.f. Good old e.l.f. This is the Instant Lift Brow Pencil. It's their $3 eyebrow pencil. Still a phenomenal pickup. Still the most affordable eyebrow product that I can recommend to you. I forgot that it was only just last year that I put this in my favorites because I feel like at this point, it's a long time favorite of mine. So again, not a new shiny object for me to, that I reach for because I'm excited about it, but I reach for it because it's still dang good quality. I also last year was obsessed with this Kosas Duo. The Brow Pop I really liked because it was a really dry pencil. And then the Airbrow, these were a golden combination for me last year. I'm not as into these. I still think they're a very, very nice combination. I'll reach for these, you know, if I don't know what to reach for, but my excitement has died off for it a little. That doesn't mean I don't think the quality is not good anymore. It is still good, but I have other eyebrow products that I think are a lot better, so I don't reach for these as much. I don't make an effort to reach for them as much. It's a better term for me. And then the last eyebrow product that I have, I swore by this well into 2022 as well. This is the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. I told you guys you had to get it. If you loved, loved, loved the spiky feather brows, 
this was it. This was the only one that would hold and gel my eyebrows all day. I found something that was better. So now this isn't a favorite. The Too Faced Lamination Brow Gel is way better than that. And that says a lot because the Patrick Ta, phenomenal as well. I mean, I still really like it, but the Too Faced is like miles better than any competitor product in my opinion, that this one just isn't that good or exciting anymore, but it's still very nice. And then I have a couple of eyeliners. The first one is the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen. Discovered this last year. This was another game changer. I'm still obsessed with this one to this day. It has two different sides to it. it lasts forever. I mean, in terms of you'll have it forever, which as it should be. You spend a lot of money on this, but for some reason I get the quickest and easiest wings with this. It just makes eyeliner so easy. So this is still my go-to liquid liner, period. I put in the Natasha Denona Macro Tech Eye Crown. Honestly, it's been a long time since I've used this. I was really into brown eyeliners this year. If you see this year's video, I put a bunch of different brown liners that I was loving, so I, I didn't reach for this one that much. I'm sure it's still great, but I've been using other brown pencils, like Jones Road Beauty, the best pencil, is my favorite brown pencil ever, so. This one is a little deeper than that one, but this one, I guess, is still good. I haven't used it, though. Three mascaras, but you know mascaras don't last as long, so I don't have a couple of them. The first one is the Thrive Cosmetics Mascara. This is one where if I didn't own so many mascaras right now, I would repurchase it. I kind of miss it. I really liked it for very quick makeup days because it is such a good quality tubing mascara and it made my lashes look really, really long. So I still really like it and I want to repurchase it, but I'm waiting for the current mascaras that I have open to get rid of them. And then the other one is the Maybelline Falsies Lash Lift. This is one of my favorite drugstore mascaras. Again, the same reason that I didn't repurchase it, but still really like this one as well. I made my lashes look visible, which is a big thing. And then the other favorite that I had last year is the Armani Eyes to Kill Mascara. I still really like this one as well, but I think I found better mascaras this year than this one. So while I still really like it, once I'm done with this one, I don't think I'll repurchase it because I love the ones that I discovered this year a little bit more. And now we are down to lips. I have a few lip liner formulations. I actually had quite a few this year as well. Last year, I was in love with the Patrick Ta Precision Lip Crayons. I haven't been reaching for these as much because I've kind of fell into a routine with my favorite lip liners for 2022. Too, but I use this today so stinking good still I am actually like rekindled my love for this so I think I might reach for these more I love the colors that Patrick Ta has I love the precision you have with these so these are still really nice I just remembered how much I love them today and then I also had the Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat in the shade pillow talk to medium still loving this one I actually used it in my top five, bottom five Charlotte Tilbury video as one of my recommendations. So this one is still one of my most used. It's like my lip color, but better, a little bit deeper. It allows me to contour and reshape the shape of my lips because it's so similar to my natural lip color. You can hardly tell. And then the last lip liners are the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lip Crayons, which I still think are very nice lip liners. I didn't reach for this formula quite as much this year. There were just some other formulas that I loved more. I would say of the three formulas that I'm featuring in today's video, these are the ones that fell off like just a little bit, but I still like them. Now, lipsticks. One formula that I don't have that I put in last year's was the BK Beauty Luxe Lipsticks. Those are still really beautiful lipsticks, but they don't have a very long lasting time, which is fine, they're lipsticks. Mine went bad. They started to smell, so I threw them away. But Lisa did a great job with the color and formulation of those. I just have such a large lip collection that I didn't want to repurchase them, but they are a really great lipstick. The only thing I don't like about them is the shape of them. It's a little bit hard for me to get some precision on the lips, but other than that, beautiful, beautiful lipstick. They just went bad, so that's why I don't have them anymore. Also, this was a shade of the year for me. This is from Pat McGrath, the Dream Lover. I have it on today. It really is a good color. I haven't reached for it as much this year, but it still is one of my all-time favorite colors from Pat McGrath lipsticks. I've just fallen into only using my Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks and Natasha Denona this year, but this is a beautiful color. Very, very wearable. But I'll be the first to admit I haven't reached for it as much, but I still like it. And then I also had my Natasha Denona lipsticks in here, the Andrea and Amarosa shades, 
were my favorites last year. I haven't reached specifically for these shades as much, but I still am reaching for Natasha Denona lipsticks all the time. They're one of the creamiest formulations on the market. So between that and Charlotte Tilbury, they're still a top tier for me. These two colors in particular, I've actually been reaching for different ones. So good that I'm adding in a little bit more variety. Lip glosses, I have two different formulations. The first ones are the Pat McGrath lip glosses and the three shades that I featured last year are still my all-time favorite three shades as well as my all-time favorite lip gloss formulation, Pat McGrath does it best. I've talked about these three shades all year still. Dare to Bear, Faux Real, Divine Rose. These are the best everyday shades in my opinion. I'm wearing Divine Rose on my lips right now. I have continued my love for these guys. They're still constantly being used by me. And then the last product in today's video, the last favorite that I have from last year, is the Fenty Beauty Heat Lip Glosses. And of the Fenty Beauty formulas, this one continues to be my favorite because it has that plumping sensation that's not overwhelming, but it really does feel like it's doing something and they have really great colors. Fenty continues to be one of my favorite lip gloss formulations as well. I don't love it as much as Pat McGrath, but this is like my second favorite lip gloss formulation. So there we have it. Those are updates on all of my favorite products from 2021. Where are they now? How do I feel about them? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was like the ultimate kind of second round of reviews for you guys a year later. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you would like me to do this with my palettes. We'll see if I get around to that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I will have the links down below to this year's current favorites and last year's current favorites if you want to see. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.